Hello everyone and welcome to the IT Knowledge Base YouTube channel. Your ultimate destination for IT tutorials, troubleshooting guides and in-depth tech insights. Whether you are an IT expert looking for advanced solutions or a beginner seeking to build a solid foundation in information technology, we have got you covered. Our channel offers step-by-step -step guides, review of the latest tech trends and practical tips to help you stay ahead in the ever-changing IT landscape. Subscribe for regular updates and never miss out on essential IT knowledge. In the PFSense, the integration with Microsoft Radius for authenticating from Microsoft Active Directory using Radius or NPS allows a Windows server to handle authentication tasks using the Network Policy Server or NPS. This setup enables the Windows server to authenticate users for various services such as OpenVPN, Captive Portal, PPoE Server and even the PFSense Firewall GUI itself. NPS or Network Policy Server can authenticate users based on local accounts on the Windows Server or through Active Directory, making it a versatile solution for managing network access. This integration is particularly useful in environments where centralized authentication and policy management are required. Please note, while support for NPS has been present since Windows Server 2008, this video focuses on current version of Windows Server 2022 software. And here is the valuable diagram explanation authenticating from Active Directory using RADIUS or NPS. In this diagram, I am illustrating the seven step process of how an OpenVPN remote user connect and authenticate through a Microsoft Active Directory RADIUS server. Here is a step by step breakdown of the process. In the step number one, remote user initiates connection. The remote user start by launching the OpenVPN client on their device and attempt to connect to the corporate's network. In the step number two, OpenVPN server receives connection request. The OpenVPN server located within the corporate network receives the connection request from the remote user. Step number three, the OpenVPN server forwards the authentication request to the RADIUS server. In this setup, the RADIUS server is configured to use Microsoft Network Policy Server or NPS. Step number four, the RADIUS server or NPS then requires the Microsoft Active Directory to verify the user's credentials. This involves checking the username and passwords against the stored credential in the Active Directory. And then step number five, the Active Directory responds to the RADIUS server with the authentication result. If the credentials are correct, it sends an access accept message. Otherwise, it sends an access reject message. Step number six, RADIUS server sends response to OpenVPN server. Based on the response from the Active Directory, the RADIUS server sends an appropriate response back to the OpenVPN server. And then in last step number seven, OpenVPN server grant or denies access. If the RADIUS server response is access accept, the OpenVPN server establishes the VPN connection and allowing the remote user to access the corporate network. If the response is access reject, the connection is denied. This process ensures that only authenticated user can access the corporate network via the VPN, leveraging the security and user management capabilities of Microsoft Active Directory and RADIUS or NPS. In Active Directory, I have purposely created a group called VPN users. This is to allow open VPN connection only to those users who have added to a group. Or you can call it in a security term that the users should be explicitly member of this group. Otherwise, the connection will not be established. Let's check the users who have explicitly added to this group. Click on members. I have added several of my authorized users whom I wanted to connect from outside of my premises or any remote locations. Now choosing a server for NPS or network policy services and NPS requires a minimal number of resources and is suitable for addition to an existing Windows server in the most environment. Microsoft recommends installing it on an Active Directory domain controller to improve performance in environment where NPS is authenticating against Active Directory. Here I must give you a tip. NPS can also be installed on a member server which may be desirable in some environments to reduce the attack footprint of a domain controllers. Each network accessible service provides another potential avenue for compromising a server. NPS has a solid security record, especially compared to other services that must be running on domain controllers for Active Directory to function. So this is not much of a concern in most network environments. Most networks install NPS on one of their domain controllers. Microsoft recommends running it on each domain controller in the forest and using NPS proxies to share the load for a busy environment. Now let's install the NPAS or Network Policy and Access Services. Never mind if you call it NPS or NPAS, it's a self same. Open the Server Manager dashboard. 
click on manage click add roles and features click next until the wizard displays the server selection screen select your current server from the list click next check network policy and access services on the list of the roles click add features if it appears Click next on each screen until the end of the wizard and click install. Depending on the Windows Server version, click on close once the installation is complete. Now NPAS is just installed. To configure the NPAS, bring up the server manager once again. Click on tools and then click on network policy server. As I have installed NPS on my domain controller, so NPS must be registered first in the Active Directory. Right click on the NPS and click on Register Server in Active Directory. Click on OK. Click OK again. And now NPS is registered in the Active Directory. Now first configure a Radius Client for the firewall, then set up Remote Access Policies. To adding a Radius Client, expand the Radius Clients and Server. Click Radius Clients, right click on Radius Clients, click New, enter a friendly name for the firewall and I would prefer it should be pf-fw1 and this is according to my scenario. I would enter the IP address from which the firewall will initiate Radius request or a FQDN that resolves to that IP address. 10.0.40.1 Please note, this is the IP address of the firewall interface closest to the RADIUS server. If the RADIUS server is reachable via the firewall LAN interface, this will be the LAN IP address of the firewall. In deployments where the firewall is not parameter firewall and the WAN interface resides on the internal network where the RADIUS server resides, the WAN IP address would be the correct address. Now enter a shared secret. This shared secret is used by the firewall to authenticate itself when making radius access requests. Windows can automatically create a shared secret using the generate option. But we are not going with this and rather I would prefer to enter it manually. I've entered my secret. Now click on OK. The NPS configuration for Radius Client is now complete and your first Radius Client is visible here. And after that, you have required to configure user and network policies. Network policies control whether a user can authenticate via Radius using network policies. An administrator can place a user in a specific Active Directory group to allow VPN access and also offers more advanced capabilities such as time of day restrictions. Adding a network policy, expand policies, Click on Network Policies, right click on Network Policies and click on New. Enter the policy name. I would enter Allow from Firewall. Leave the type of Network Access Server set to Unspecified. Click Next. Click Add in the Specify Condition window. Select Windows Group. Click on Add. And here you have to enter or select the VPN users active directory group. Why I am allowing the VPN users group? Because I am restricting all my domain users to connecting to my open VPN server and allowing only those users who have added or a member of this VPN users group. This is a secure and recommended approach. Click on add groups, type VPN users, click OK, click on next. In the specify access permission, choose access granted, click next. In the authentication method, add EAP types and authentication methods as needed. Leave existing authentication method selected. Now click on add and select Microsoft Secure Password EAP MSHF V2. If the firewall will use this policy for IPsec IK V2 EAP radius authentication, click OK. Now select Encrypted Authentication or CHAP and Unencrypted Authentication PAP or SPAP. Click Next. Click No or Decline if the wizard prompts you to view a help topic about security. You may configure any additional access constraints if necessary but in this video leave it default. Click Next. Click Next on the remaining screen until the final screen is reached and click on Finish.
Editing an existing network policy. Existing policy can be altered to change their constraints or other properties. For example, to edit an older policy to enable it for use by IPsec for IKV2, EAP or RADIUS. In the network policy, edit the policy currently in use. For example, this is my existing policy. Right click it and click on properties. Click on constraints tab. Click authentication method. Click add. Select Microsoft secured password EAP MSF V2 if not already selected. This is already added. Now select encrypted authentication chap and unencrypted authentication PAP or SPAP authentication method. Click apply to restart NPS and click on OK. Now that NPS is ready to accept authentication request, the next step is to add an authentication server entry on the PFSense firewall. Open the PFSense firewall GUI. This is my PFSense firewall. Navigate to system, user manager, authentication server. Click add to create a new entry. Now enter the following settings. A must have descriptive name. I would prefer to write active directory, NPS, this is in my case. And definitely it should be different in your case. Select the type and this must be radius. In the radius server setting, protocol must be MSChap v2 is fine. Host name or IP address 10.0.40.201. This is the NPS server IP address installed in my Active Directory server and you should replace it with yours. Shared secret. Type the same password that we have already added in NPS. Service offered, select to authentication. Authentication port 1812 is the default in my situation. You should not change it, leave it to default. In the radius NAS IP attribute, change it to LAN and click on save. You have successfully added radius authentication from the Active Directory in the PFSense firewall. Now test the authentication and incorporation PFSense firewall with our on-premises NPS server. On the PFSense firewall GUI, navigate to Diagnostics. Click on Authentication. Set authentication server to the entry for NPS. Enter an existing username and password. Day Jones and the password. This user should be part of the group VPN users added earlier in this video in the NPS for tightening the security and restricting to authorized users only who should have access. Now click on test. If that test succeeded, that means your incorporation between PFSense firewall and on-prem Microsoft Windows Server radius with NPS is successful. And now you configure other services such as IPsec or OpenVPN to use the new radius server and attempt authentication there. Try another user, H, H desk, and the password. And the authentication is failed for the H desk user due to wrong password or typo, whatever it is. Now let's discuss some evident NPS troubleshooting. The most common problem users encounter with NPS. First, verify the radius ports. Open the NPS. Now let's discuss some evident NPS troubleshooting. The most common problem users encounter with NPS. First verify the radius ports. Ensure NPS is using the default port 1812. And if the NPS server was already installed, it may have been using a non-standard port. Let's verify. Open the NPAS or NPS. Right click on the server and click on properties. Then click on Ports tab. Verify that the authentication port set includes port 1812. NPS can also use multiple ports separated with commas like this. Verify the accounting port is also set to its default port 1813. This is only necessary if the use case requires radius accounting. Click on OK. Further to troubleshooting, check Event Viewer for further inspection. Open Event Viewer on the Windows Server. Right click on Start Menu, click on Event Viewer. When NPS handles the radius authentication request, it creates a log entries in the security log in Event Viewer with the result of the authentication request. 
If it denies, it logs the reason in the event log. These logs entries can be viewed in one of the two ways. Click on Windows log, click on security. Look for entries in the log that reference NPS. Here it is. For example, this log entry, double click on it. Account name is HDesk. Further to scroll down, this is a NAS IP version 4 address, this is my PFSense IP address, this is my PFSense identifier name, note the radius client, note the friendly name of my PFSense firewall, check the IP address, the domain controller name is Windows authentication type. And the reason of authentication failed due to a user credentials mismatch either the username provided does not map to an existing user account or the password was incorrect. Click on close. You can also use the custom view which only displays NPS log entries. Expand the custom views. Expand server roles. Click network policy and access services. The custom views only displays the NPS log entries. Similar messages are available in both locations. However, their formats may vary slightly. The contents of the log message contains a reason line which explains why authentication failed. The common two failures are authentication failed due to a user credentials mismatch. This indicates that the user supplied an invalid username or password. And the second one is the network access permission setting in the dial-in properties of the user account in Active Directory is set to deny access to the user. It indicates that the user account is set to deny access or the network policy in NPS do not allow access for that user. For example, they may not be a member of the correct group. If NPS is logging that authentication was successful, but the client is receiving a bad username or password message, ensure that the radius secret configured in NPS and on the firewall is must match. Alright, that is all for the now. Thank you for watching and I look forward to sharing more of my journey with you all. If you want to see more or some training content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it. Or if you have any issues or questions, you can reach out to me and I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you.